Good day, everyone. This is Chris back again at the Ancient Scholars. So this is a follow-up um, on the minute ventilation uh, video that I did uh, yesterday. And uh, the the person that um, had initially contacted me with this question uh, replied to me, uh, I believe, last night. and said, hey, that's, that's great. I really like your video, but that's not quite what I was asking. Uh, so I do apologize for kind of misinterpreting um, the, the, the question. Uh, well, basically, uh, to, to break it down, um, the, the person asked me, hey, I was told that I can increase my tidal volume and decrease my rate, and that will result in, uh, basically, I increase my tidal volume, decrease my rate, but, but I maintain the same VE. And in doing that, I will decrease CO2. How can that be if my VE doesn't change? Well, the answer to that is, is a little complicated. And, and the best way for me to, to, to show you the answer is to just go ahead and, and proof it mathematically. Give you <coughs> a quantitative description of, of what's going on. This is not always the case. Okay, um, that we have to work. Basically, we have to work the numbers ex perfectly right to to make it be this this case here. So this is not a general case. This is a special case, and only if I work my numbers right can I actually get this. Okay, well let's just go ahead and start on it, and hopefully I can get this in in one video. If not, I'll have to break it up. Let's say that I have a 150 pound patient. Okay. And I have that patient uh, on the ventilator at a tidal volume of 500. Okay, 500 milliliters is my tidal volume. And a respiratory rate of 10, or frequency of 10. Okay, so we know that the, I'll put the VE over here, VE equals 500. What I'll do is I'll go 0 0.5 um, times 10. And that equals 5 liters per minute. Okay, so that's with uh, the ventilator these current settings. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can play around a little bit um, with the rate and the volume and get the same overall uh, minute ventilation. And let's say that now I have that same patient and I have increased the tidal volume to 630 Okay, so that's my new tidal volume. I've increased it to 630. Um, and I have a new rate of 8. Okay, so my VE is just going to equal, it's going to equal my, my tidal volume times my rate. And that should be a fairly straightforward calculation. And, and again, you know, we can do this in both uh, liters, milliliters. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, con I'll convert everything to uh, liters just to kind of keep it consistent. Um, and that calculation, uh, 0 0.63 times 8, is going to equal um, 5.04. Okay, so just just barely over 5. You know, it's just four, 40 milliliters uh, difference. Um, so let's just say, uh, let's just round this and say that the VE approximately equals 5. Okay, 5 liters per minute. Okay, so what have I done? I've increased the tidal volume, decreased the respiratory rate, and I basically have the same overall minute ventilation. Hopefully everyone would agree that I've done that. I went from 500 to 630, and I went from 10 to 8, and I have the same overall VE. My minute ventilation is the same. Okay? So, so far, um, the, the argument at this point would be, well, hey, my minute ventilation is unchanged. Uh, clearly... My carbon dioxide isn't going to change because I'm not blowing off any more air. However, what did I talk about yesterday? I talked about something called alveolar minute ventilation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate my dead space. And let's just say for this, this example that we have zero mechanical dead space. That'd be impossible, but let's just, just keep, just to keep the math simple, let's say that we have zero mechanical dead space. No mechanical, it's all physiological. If you remember, uh, physiological dead space is one milliliter per pound. All right, so I have a 150 pound patient, that's going to be 150 milliliters of um, uh, physiological uh, dead space. 
All right, fair enough. So let's go ahead and look at our first patient again. The first patient had a tidal volume of 500. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract this physiological dead space from every breath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 500 subtract 150. All right. Because every breath I'm losing 150 mils to my dead space. So this should be a pretty straightforward calculation. Okay. So zero here, five here, 350. So only 350 milliliters are actually getting into the alveoli, and that's called my alveolar minute ventilation. So now let's go ahead and recalculate. Remember, our original minute ventilation was 5 liters per minute. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do 350 times 10, okay? And that's going to give me uh, 3,500, 3, 3,500, or 3.5 liters, okay? So the alveolar minute ventilation on my first patient is 3.5 liters per minute. Okay, 3.5 liters per minute. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put up over here 3.5, okay, for my alveolar VE. And this is on patient number one. We'll keep that blue. Let's go ahead and look at patient number two now. So patient, or not patient number two, but... Um, the after the ventilator change. So what I've done here is I increased my tidal volume to 630 mils and I decreased my rate to 8. Alright, let's do the same thing here. 630, it's still the same 150 pound patient, so I'm going to subtract 150 mils of dead space. Okay, it gives me 0. Uh, decrease that. Okay, so 5 into 13 should be a pretty easy uh, calculation there. Uh, Gives me, uh, oop, where am I here? There we go. Eight. Okay, 480 mils. Okay, so and I'm only getting 480 milliliters per breath of um, of alveolar ventilation. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, 480. Okay, and I'm going to multiply that by eight, right? Because that's my new respiratory rate. I take that four, or I could do 0 uh, point, uh, 0.48 multiplied by eight. Uh, doesn't really matter, and that gives me 3.840. Let's just go ahead and, and keep it at 3.8. So the alveolar minute ventilation for this patient is 3.8 liters. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare now. Let's go over here. So my original alveolar minute ventilation is 3.5, my new alveolar minute ventilation is 3.8 liters per minute. Okay after making my ventilator change. So you can see just how important the concept of um, alveolar minute ventilation is. I kind of rubbed that out a little bit. Sorry about that. You can see just how important and how different alveolar minute ventilation is from overall ventilation. Overall minute ventilation. There was no change in my overall minute ventilation when I made this ventilator change. When I decreased the tidal volume and increased the rate. However, because I increased that tidal volume, um, that meant that more of that breath was actually getting into the alveoli. Uh, 480 milliliters per breath versus 350 milliliters per breath in this, patient, er, in, in this uh, scenario here. So even though my overall minute ventilation is unchanged, my alveolar minute ventilation has increased. And it is ultimately alveolar minute ventilation um, that determines you know, how much carbon dioxide is blown off. Because clearly, I am um, ventilating better with, in this situation than this situation. Even though the overall minute ventilation is unchanged, I am getting more gas in and out of the alveoli. Uh, and that's why it is so important as you, you get into your, your ventilator management it, to go ahead and compensate and calculate for a minute uh, loss of, of dead space. Most modern ventilators, um, when you do the circuit test, um, they will compensate for volume loss in the ventilator circuit, um, but we still have to be aware that we're going to lose a certain amount of, um, of, of dead space per breath uh, to physiological dead space. So um, again, I think this is a good activity, and hopefully this makes sense, you know, what is going on here. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.